Hello there, O Church, and Merry Christmas. Uh, I'm going to say Happy New Year as well because I, I probably won't record one for this uh, this next uh, week. Um, but I am I'm looking forward to the new year. I um, hope that anyone listening in would say, Hey, I, I got a question on this or that, and we could talk about that. Or I was thinking of at least once a month going back into uh, the social justice stuff and uh, talking about you know, different things that the church can be doing uh, in order to combat that and combat other things that are uh, are everywhere right now. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that in the new year. I can't believe it's almost 2023. Have you ever been stuck? Maybe you've been stuck in a snowstorm. Or maybe stuck on a nice good math problem. Uh, or maybe you've been in a situation where you just knew, I have to get out of here. See, sinners are stuck in their sin and cannot get out. We cannot do enough to rid ourselves of our state. So who can? Right? That's a great question. Who can get us out of our broken estate? The answer, if you, if you look through all the religions of the world, you will see a huge difference right away. And, you know, a lot of them are like, oh, yeah, they're, they're all the same and all roads. Lead. It's like, no, they don't. All roads do not lead to God. Because there is a fundamental difference between every religion and Christianity. Every other religion says do. You need to do this, you need to do that, you need to work your way to God. Where Christianity says, is done for you. You need to rest in that and be a new creation. The answer is the promised one, the, the Messiah, the righteous one come for us. The Lord says this to Abram, later renamed Abraham in the book of Genesis. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go to your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and to him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now that's Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Sorry, I forgot to give the reference. See, the blessings to, to Abram or Abraham are to him, his name, his nation, and will make him a blessing. It will actually bless the whole world. That all the families of the earth would be blessed by Abraham. And that happens through the Messiah, the promised one to come, the seed of the woman, the son given. From the people of Israel to the tribe of Judah, from the line of David to sit on David's throne forever. All of this is fulfilled in Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one of God, his unique son, who took upon flesh, lived a sin, sinless life. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, some people argue that, no, Jesus was sinful and, and you know did these things and did those things. And it's like, no. He was the perfect Lamb of God. And man and the law saw that. Jesus came to fulfill the law and he did that because he is the perfect Lamb of God able to keep all of the commandments. And he died a sinner's death upon a cross taking our place and taking the whole of the wrath of God. See, Paul explains it in the book of Romans, what happened. Romans 3, 21 through 26. But now the righteousness of God has been manifest apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, 
whom God put forward as a propitiation, that's a covering, by his blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he has passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. This is the wonder that we celebrate, that the righteous one came. You know, the Old Testament tells he is coming. The Gospels cry out, he is here. And the letters entreat us, he has come, he saves, and now this is how we go forward as new creations in Christ. And then Revelation tells us he is coming back. See, there is no distinction, all have sinned. The law proves that. All of us are stuck and unable to stand before God as we are, no matter how good we appear to be. But there is no distinction as well. All can be justified in Christ Jesus by placing our faith, our trust, by resting in his finished work and in his person. And we are found righteous in the sight of God. That is the wonder and miracle of everything that we celebrate at Christmas time. Everything that we celebrate at Easter. Every time we gather and open up the word of God and proclaim who Christ is and who he has saved. Us. Us sinners, right? That is what Christianity is all about. It is a huge distinction between every other ism, every other religion, everything is that it's not works-based, it's grace-based, period. It's, it has been done. Will we rest in it, or will we wrestle away from it? That's the question, right? And I think, you know, so, so many people wonder, you know, why, why are religions, why are cults booming? It's because it, it gives you these endorphins. It gives you this, well, I'm, I'm doing something to, you know, form and frame my... <gasps> <clears throat> my faith or my my religion and I'm I'm working my way to God you know but how beautiful is the gospel that the king of all creation wants a relationship with us to to know where are you to come and and, and deal with our sin and shame and to to cover us with the blood of Christ that is the amazing part of the incarnation is that Christ came to dwell among us that that we might believe upon him and become be granted the right to become children of God it's an amazing wonder that Jesus came for us sinners that that Christ died for his enemies that is what Christmas is all about and we can we can go on celebrating through our lives that he's come for us and that we can share that and proclaim that each season each day each Sunday that's an amazing thing well thank you all for joining us here if you're watching on Christmas Day hey Merry Christmas if if you're catching us at another time you know I I pray that you hope in his promises because he is the perfect one. And God is a God who keeps all of his promises. And Christ is a great redeemer that is coming back. That we would hope in him and have our hope and stay in him throughout all of our days. Thank you all for being here and uh, we hope to, to talk to you soon. Bye.